you know, this past year, you know, 2020, you know, you see all the memes and you see all the things on, you know, if, if 2020, you know, were this or if it were that, and, you know, it's been a, all in all, it's been a difficult year. We've lost a lot of people here at the Fellowship Christian Center. Uh, uh, Barb lost her mom. Uh, I lost dad. We lost brother Wingate. Uh, we lost, you know, several other people. We've had some setbacks. We've had this, that, and the other. And it'd be real easy to get wrapped up in that and get, you know, to a place where you're feeling sorry for yourself or you're, you know, having, you know, your own little pity party. And I got to thinking about, you know, I'm not going to let something like that steal my joy because the Bible tells me that if your sins are on the blood of Jesus, that we're to rejoice when the saints pass over. We're to praise the Lord when those things happen. And, but I started looking at our country, not just my family, not just my church family, not just my neighborhood thing, but as I looked at the country and I see, you know, the pall that's been cast over this country and the anxiety and the angst and the fear and the doubt and all this discouragement. And like I said uh, Sunday, you know, as I've been reading more, you know, I've got a little bit more time because I'm not going to work and you know, I've been reading a lot of different things and, you know, I'm kind of a nerd. And, but looking at what's happened just since March in the United States of America, you know, Back in March, everybody was going to church. They hadn't shut down any churches yet. But when they shut down the churches, some people started watching church online. Some people stopped watching church online. And then when they opened churches back up, some people still watched church online. Some people came back to church. But a third of the people that used to go to church back in March don't go to church anymore, and they don't even watch church on TV. So we're seeing this insidious thing. And I, I was listening to Billy Graham, you know, one of his last messages, and I've shared it with uh, Brother Cecil and uh, Mitch and, and Carl before church. One of the last messages he preached, he was talking about the Christians in America, how you can't find a single one of them that didn't believe in God. They all believed in God. But he said about half the people that he talked to didn't believe in Satan. And I'm here to tell you that the Bible tells me that there's a Satan. The Bible tells me that there's a power out there. The Bible tells me that we're in a spiritual warfare and we're to arm ourselves and prepare ourselves. And so, you know, people want to be blessed. People want to have joy. People want to have, you know, an excitement about serving God. So how can we get there? How can we get back to that? You know, the Bible tells us in John, the 15th chapter, the 7th verse, it says, it, if we... We read, if we ask what we will, it shall be done to us. But they forget about reading the first part of John, the 15th chapter, 7th verse, that if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, then you can ask what you will and you shall be given you. See, we've got to abide in the vine. We've got to be living. We've got to be hooked in to the power source. We've got to be attached to Jesus Christ. We've got to be working the way the Lord tells us to work. We've got to be doing the way he tells us to do. We've got to read the word of God. We've got to apply it in all of our ways. So in 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, 14th verse, I know I've read this before. I know you've probably heard it enough in these last uh, few months. Uh, people love to quote this, but I'm here to tell you today that this is a scripture the Lord gave me to read tonight, and that's what I'm going to read. And it says, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. It says, if my people, it didn't say if the world, it didn't say if the United States of America, it said if my people that are called by my name, if the true church, if the true body of Christ will stand up and call on Jesus, will stand up and humble themselves, will stand up and pray, will stand up and seek his face. See, he's given us a list of things, and he's given us an order to follow after these things. It says to humble ourselves. In 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, 6th verse says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. 
We're not to ask the Lord to humble us. We are to humble ourselves. See, you don't want the Lord to humble you. You don't want the Lord to bring you down low. You want to bring yourself down low. How do we do that? By realizing that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. That realizing that God spoke this world into existence. That realize that God breathed life into us. To realize that God sent his only begotten son. When we start realizing how big God is, when we start realizing how great God is, when we start realizing that he is supernatural and we are but like ants in his sight, if we could realize how big God is, then we will naturally humble ourselves. But see, man has a, has a purpose. We think that we've got to know all the answers. We think that we've got to do all the deeds. We think that we can do stuff for ourselves, that we are sufficient in and of ourselves. And when we do that, when we have that kind of arrogance, we find it hard to humble ourselves. But the Bible clearly tells us to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves. Humble ourselves and seek. Humble ourselves and seek his face and pray. We need to pray. James, the fifth chapter, the 16th verse says, The effectual. Fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Prayer changes things. The effectual, fervent prayer. That's a prayer that is effective. That's a prayer that is on fire. A fervent man is on fire. How can we be on fire? We need to be hooked in to Jesus Christ. We need to have the Holy Ghost running through us. We need to be an instrument of God. We need to be a tool that God can use to reach out to this lost and dying world. We need to pray. We need to have effectual prayer. What does that mean? That means when I get down, I'm not praying for God to give me the winning lottery numbers. That means when I get down to pray, I'm not praying that some, they find a long lost relative that's a millionaire. I'm praying for God's will in my life. I'm praying that God opens up his window and let me see what he sees. Let me know what he wants me to do. See, too many times we go through this life without a purpose. If you want to know why people have, are down and out, why people have anxiety, why people don't want to get up in the morning, because they don't have a purpose. I'm here to tell you God has given us a purpose. We have a reason to get out of bed. We have a reason to go about our day daily life and that is to be a light to this lost and dying world so if we want to pray for something let's pray for God to open up the windows in heaven and pour out a blessing on us and pour out an anointing on us the right word at the right place and the right time for the right person we should be praying for those things to happen we need to be humbling ourselves and praying, and we need to be seeking his face. So that's how we find the blessing, seek his face. In Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, 13th verse, and 14th verse, it says, And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. See, a lot of people say they're looking for the Lord, but they're looking for the Lord in all the wrong places. It said, seek me. And ye shall find me when you shall search for me with your whole heart. See, we need to be looking for the Lord with all of our heart. Not just a little bit, oh, I'll go to church this coming Sunday and I hope that, you know, I find the Lord there. Or I hope that I hear something that tickles my ear. Or I hope. Are you seeking for the Lord with your whole heart? Are you getting up in the morning? Are you praying? Are you doing your devotions? Are you praying before you go to bed at night? Are you seeking the Lord when you're driving to work, when you're coming home from work? We need to make sure that we're seeking for the Lord with our whole heart. We need to... Re relentlessly pursue him we need to be pursuing God's will in our life we need to be trying to find out what God needs us to do we need to want to do that more than anything else see everybody's looking everywhere except right here see God should be dwelling right here God should be dwelling within us. We should, have this, we should have this heart all cleaned and ready to go. You know, if we've humbled ourselves and we've been praying, we will find his face. We will find his anointing in our life. In 1 John, the first chapter, 15th verse said that God is light and in him is no darkness. See, he's not hiding in the dark corners. He's out there where you can see him. You're not going to find him in some back alley. You're not going to find him in the corner of some bar. You're not going to find him in some seedy motel. You're going to find him out in the light. He's out there. He wants you to find him. He's not hiding. He says, I've made this way so plain that a wayfaring fool wouldn't err therein. I've made this so plain. I want to make this as easy as possible for you. I know how hard this life is. I'm going to make it easy. All you have to do is believe that my son Jesus Christ 
died on the cross for your sins and confess him as your savior and then go out and sin no more. See, he sent grace. He sent grace to us. You know, if we tried to live by the light, by the law, all of us would fail. If we tried to live by the Old Testament edicts, we would all fall down flat on our face. So how can we prepare for these blessings? We've humbled ourselves. We've prayed. We've, we've sought his face. Turn from your wicked ways. See, a lot of people say, oh, well, I go to church. I don't have any wicked ways. This verse says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, it tells me there that there may be a handful of people that are calling themselves saints, a handful of people that are saying they're children of God that need to turn from their wicked ways, that need to go back to the Father's house, that need to go back and get a fresh anointing, that need to go back and touch the altar one more time. In Isaiah, the 55th chapter, the 7th verse, it says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. See, many people are expecting the blessings of God, but they're not willing to seek his face. They're not willing to turn from their wicked ways. They just want God to bless them right there with that. Oh, Lord, bless this mess. Lord, you could do it. Yes, he could. But he's given us a way to get to those blessings. He said, if you will humble yourself, if you will pray, if you will seek my face, if you'll turn from your wicked ways, then... I will hear from heaven. Then, that's how we receive. What's that little word then mean? It means at that time. That's what Daniel Webster says it means. At that time, if we humble ourselves, if we pray, if we seek his face, if we turn from our wicked ways, at that time, it says, I will hear from heaven. See, it's a small little word then, but God placed a requirement. God placed a qualification. God said, hey, you guys want blessings? You guys want to be touched of the Lord? <laughs> My wife's telling me, be careful, don't walk too far from the cane. I got a little excited. But he said, at that time, if you want blessings, I've given you a formula to receive those blessings. You want joy, I've given you a formula to receive those joy. See, too many times we get caught up in this rat race. We get caught up in this day-to-day -day life. We get caught up in this pattern. It's okay if I just go to church on Sunday and Wednesday. That's all I really need to do. But what do you do on Monday? What do you do on Saturday? What do you do on Friday? Are you still reading your word? See, if the only time you open your Bibles when the preacher gets up here and says, hey, let's open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians. Or let's open our Bibles to John. Let's open our Bible to Luke. Is that the only time you open your Bible? Then you're missing out on a lot of blessings. You're missing out on a lot of joy. You're missing out on a lot of time where God can be speaking to you. There's times when God speaks to me and it may not be in an audible voice. There's times when I'll open up my word and it just something will come off the page. It's like it just pops up off the page, like in three dimension. It's like, oh, that's what the Lord wants to tell me today. See, if we could take our time to humble ourselves, to seek his face, to pray, to turn from our wicked ways, turn from our wants, turn away from all those things that we thought were important, and get back to what he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek his righteousness, not my righteousness. My righteousness is filthy rags. It says, that small word then, see, God will do the three things that he said he would do. What did he say he would do? He said, I will hear from heaven. See, if we pray, if we humble ourselves and pray, don't come to God demanding stuff, but if we humble ourselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven. If you seek my face, if you seek my face, it says, then I will forgive your sin. If you turn from your wicked ways, then I will heal their land. Now listen to what this 15th verse says. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. See, if we humble ourselves, if we come before the Lord with a broken heart, with a contrite spirit, if we come to the Lord like that, then guess what? Guess what? That's when he's going to listen to what we've got to say. 
That's when he's going to start looking down and going, my child needs a touch today. My child needs a little bit of joy today. You know, we've got to be broken before we can rejoice. Um, I saw a, a, a story. Um, a, a girl that I know p- posted it, and she said that she was in the dollar store. And I don't know if it's real or not, but she put it on there. So, um, But she put it on there, and she said, there was a mom in there with a, with a four-year-old and a teenager. And this four-year-old wanted glow sticks. And the mom had glow sticks, and they evidently were having a party or something, and she opened the little thing of glow sticks up and handed one to the four-year-old, and it was just waving it around, walking around. And the teenager took it away from him. And he started screaming, and the mom looked at it, and the teenager snapped it and handed it back, and it started glowing. And she goes, what did you do? He says, you can't see the light until you're broken. See, God can't use us until we're broken. God can't use us until we humble ourselves. See, that, that little child was just as happy shaking that unbroken glow stick around. See, there's a lot of Christians out there that haven't humbled themselves. There are a lot of people out there that think they've already got it made. That's just out there shaking. But when you break that, and God begins to do the work in you, like that chemical does in that glow stick, and it starts to glow. And then everybody can see that light. And then all of a sudden, when you're waving that thing around, people can see that you were once broken, but now... You're serving a purpose. Now you're serving the purpose that God has called you for. Just like that glow stick was meant to glow, but it can't glow until it was broken. We're meant to shine a light to this lost and dying world, and we can't do that until we humble ourselves. We can't do that until we get back to where God wants us to be. See, we can rejoice that God is in heaven. We can rejoice that our brothers and sisters that have gone on have gone on to their reward. But we... We might still be sad, but I'm here to tell you, as long as we got breath in this body, we still got a race to run. As long as there's breath in this body, we still have a purpose under heaven. We still have a purpose for the kingdom of God, and we still got to do the things that God has called us to do. And if we fall under that category, if, if you don't have enough joy in your life, why not? Because he said, hey, I'm going to give you joy unspeakable. If you don't have peace, why not? Because he says, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. See, his peace isn't the, what the world gives. And here's what you need to understand. Peace isn't the absence of chaos. Peace isn't the absence of craziness going on. But peace is the ability to sit there in the midst of it and know that God's in control. Know that God is in control of all that. See, if we want the showers of blessings that God has got for us, he's given us a formula. We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to pray. We've got to seek his face. And most of all, we've got to turn from our wicked ways, not just as a body of Christ, but as a country. But if, he said, if my people, he didn't call the sinner. He didn't call the United States. He says, if my people that are called by my name, if you're a child of God, we need to understand. We need to take it upon us to get back to the word of God. Get back to the foundation. Get back to the bedrock. Where did you first believe? Where did you first believe? What first came upon you to say, hey, you're a child of God. We need to get back to that. Go back to the old paths and walk therein. Let's all stand. Let's just come around the altar and have a good season of prayer.